Well, I, it's great for NFL fan, fans here in Los Angeles. My own personal memories, I went to games with my father as a kid, and uh, although they didn't play in the first Super Bowl, I went to the first Super Bowl with my dad as well. Um, so I grew up, you know, watching USC football in the Coliseum as well as uh, the Los Angeles Rams. And, um, you know, then playing for them, it was, a, it was a wonderful experience for me to be able to play my entire high school, college, and professional career here in Los Angeles. Um, I played with some really incredible players, Merlin Olson, uh, Jack Youngblood, I'm thinking of. Uh, you know, it's just an amazing, amazing group of, uh, of athletes. And uh, my first, you know, Ram mo moment, I threw a touchdown on my first pass in my first game, and my last play was getting sacked by Lawrence Taylor and blowing out my knee. So that's my <laughs> bookends of my Ram career. Let me just follow up with one note. What have we... With those vivid memories, and a lot of us remember those mm -hmm. guys, uh, what has L.A. missed in these 20 years by not having a team? Well, I'd like to think UCLA football and USC football has filled the, the, the gap um, pretty well. Uh, but there is a core of NFL fan base, including my son, who called me and said he's buying a Todd Gurley jer jersey this morning. I said, don't forget about number 11. But uh, uh, <laughs> so... Um, you know, th there, th there's room in this market of Los Angeles. I mean, we have a couple of professional basketball teams as well as two good college basketball teams as well. And so it's a very, very large market uh, with a real appetite for uh, athletic events. So uh, it's going to be real nice to call them the Los Angeles Rams again. And uh, we are particularly pleased that they're coached by a, an ex-Trojan. Let's talk about sharing the facility for the next two, three years. How is that going to work out as far as SC having high standard for that facility, and then the Rams coming in as well, and just sharing the stadium, the Coliseum. Well, I have been part of the, the negoti uh, negotiations on that point of how those uh, specifics are going to work. But clearly, we're playing on Saturdays. They're playing on on Sundays. Uh, there, w there are certain NFL standards that must be met. For example, lighting. So that's one thing that'll be addressed, um, I believe, by. The Rams, uh, they will put some improvements in to get uh, to NFL standards, which will be the beneficiary of as well. Um, you know, the field, the condition of the turf, uh, it's really great with one team. With two, it's something we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about what we might want to do in that, in that case. And, and there's probably a whole variety of other things that I haven't thought about or we haven't, that they haven't thought about, that which we'll work our way through over the next few months. People forget, you one time you did share that field. It was the Rams, UCLA, the Raiders, and U.S. Yeah, there was a lot of teams that played uh, on that field, and it was in horrible shape. And I, I look back uh, on some of the video of those games, and it was like mud, dirt. And, you know, uh, I've been lucky enough to play on that field since I was 16 or 17 in, in high school. It, the field itself has never been in better shape than it has been the last two or three years. We spent a lot of money uh, and a lot of time on that very point. So um, it has to be up to NFL standards, but it has to be up to USC standards as well in that field. So that, that'll be an issue that we, we'll, you know, we'll figure out. Pat, when you hear all the talk of you know, the, uh, Goodell yesterday saying there wasn't a suitable environment, yet that's been the Trojans' home for a long time. It was your home as an NFL player. What reaction do you have to that sort of downplaying of the Coliseum as a host? Well, we're in the midst of uh, planning to renovate it. It, it does need uh, a great deal of work. It was built in 1923 and really has only been touched twice since then uh, for the Olympics and then an uh, earthquake retrofit. Um, so so we, um, we have a plan ourselves, uh, which we're executing on right now, to renovate that stadium, put $270 million in it. Is, is the uh, Rams will be attended and help us do that. Have the, the financial details of how much they're going to pay to um, share it? Has, has that already been finalized? Or? It, I think there's some details, Gary, that still need to be finalized. And, and again, I would talk to Todd Dickey about those because he, um, I'm just an underling in this game, an understudy to him. How, how does the, uh, the presence of an NFL team affect um, the aura of football at a high school or collegiate level here in LA? That's a good question. I, I think, um, you know, most big cities, major cities have NFL uh, franchises, and we haven't had one uh, since the 90s. So I think, you know, there's a lot of kids that have grown up here um, not a fan of the Los Angeles Rams or the Raiders or wh whomever. 
And so that has been missing, and that's hopefully going to get recaptured. Um, again, I think you know a lot of kids, those kids, uh, we, USC and UCLA, are the beneficiaries of that. Those kids growing up and you know wanted to be watching their USC heroes or UCLA heroes play uh, either at the Rose Bowl or the Coliseum too. And so um, you know th there, there is something, I think, for high school and college kids to some get a chance to play in an arena where a professional team plays. Now, we all know it's a, on a temporary basis, but I think you know, some of our guys will think it's cool. How does that affect if you've got the Rams here for temporarily as far as trying to impress somebody to come to USC? Or does it even factor into recruiting to bring in I don't calorie kids here? I don't think it, it factors into recruiting at all. I mean, um, you know, we sell the power of USC, what it means to be a student here to graduate from USC. And, and if you're lucky enough to play in the NFL, fantastic. But 99.3% of college football players never play a regular season down on college football. And that's a stat. It's accurate. Pro football. Pro football. Pro football. But I haven't walked around campus since this became official around six and all day today. What's your sense, especially around Heritage Hall and around you know, the football team, of the excitement level of the guy? I, you know, I, haven't seen, I haven't really seen much of the football team per se, uh, but I, th I think there's you know, kind of excitement on campus. I think uh, it'll be fun. Um, you know, it's uh, and, and I think it, as we said earlier, plenty of room for you know a couple of great college teams and a professional team here as well. Um, sometimes you have a little, little different audience. Um, I don't think it'll affect our gate at all. I think you know we have generations of of, of Trojan fans. We have one season ticket holder, uh, Herb Newbar, uh, has had season tickets since 1929. It didn't come anymore. Uh, but at, at at 103, he threw out the first pitch of a baseball game uh, a few years ago. And so um, we'll still continue to have uh, those rabid uh, USC fans who have uh, come for generations. And it, it, that's the, the fun thing. And the difference, I think, in between co collegiate and professional athletics, you'll see five generations of Trojan fans come to our games. You played your college and your pro football at the Coliseum. How much and some high school games. And some at Bishop Vermont. Mm -hmm. How are the Rams going to utilize you as far as helping them <laughs> recapture <laughs> generations past? Because uh, well, I'm, I'm way past. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I, uh, I'm going to be talking to them this afternoon, but I'm not in the capacity of, you know, how they're going to use me. I mean, hey, how can we be a great partner for them as they, you know, plan their 2016 season? Is the rumor true that you're wearing your old jersey underneath that coat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to be a lot taller than that. I didn't fit. Doesn't fit as well. No, I, I don't know where my old jersey. I don't think I have an old jersey, but it's if I do have one, it's old. <laughs> <laughs> but it's no secret that you've been an advocate for the Rams uh, relocating back to Los Angeles. Um, your reaction when when it was made official? Well, I, again, I was I was thrilled um, it, just because I, you know I, you play for that team. It's like um, when I became athletic director here, I wouldn't have done it anywhere else. It's your, it was my alma mater, and so the, I played for one professional team, and that was it. And so if somebody were going to come back, I'm delighted it is the now Los Angeles Rams. Have you texted or talked to TJ McDonald at all? No, I have not. Uh, I, I have not talked to TJ McDonald. Uh, I haven't talked to the coach uh, either. I'm going to be talking to some people this afternoon. Are you going to be sharing facilities other than the Coliseum as far as training or, or no? No. Well, they're not. I mean, I, I know they're not going to be using our our uh, football facility. It's just that we can't handle two teams there. Are there any plans for any type of upgrading in the locker room facilities or anything like that? The, not before next season. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll dress it up somehow or other. But it's it, 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 this short time frame. I, I think we'll be addressing the, the the lighting immediately and what are we going to do and how are we going to maintain the field. I think that's a conversation uh, for this afternoon for me. What do you mean to adjust the lighting? Because I'm not familiar with It's okay. The, uh, the NFL has a um, standard, a lighting standard, which I, I, I may be wrong, but I do not think the current lighting um, um, uh, adheres to the NFL standard. So if it does not, that will have to be upgraded. Just the lighting and you're not worried about anything? Well, I'm sure there'll be many things to worry about, but I mean, that's when people say the immediate changes, that, that, that resonates with me at, at this moment. But those are expenses that the Rams will have to do. I, I'm not, I am not sure of that. Again, that is, um, that is probably in the least that's been negotiated through our senior administration. Let's do one more. 
off the Rams. <laughs> when you've watched Monday night and you know you're opening against that team, I know some of those guys are going on to other things that won't be the same. I, I hope the, 27 oh, oh. guys leave early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you know, we, we all know uh, it's, um, uh, it's a formidable first game, and um, they're exceedingly well coached. Now we know they'll be ready. But I think, you know, for us, too, it, it, um, it helps you get your guys focused early. You know, they, they know from this point forward they're playing the defending champions, and I think um, they'll look forward. These guys come to USC to play, and play in, you know, games like that. We, we have a bunch of them. We're going to have a bunch of tough games. There's no layups next year at all. Um, the conference is really, really strong again. Um, and so, uh, but, you know, and then the next two years we, we, we play Texas. But, you know, that's, that's you know, kind of bring it on. The, the debate is, is, that, is it the best strategy to make the Final Four? You could argue that. Uh, is that the goal to get to the Final Four? It should be. Um, so um, that, that is, you know, the contract sign. We're playing Alabama. Uh, it's, uh, we're hoping to have Sam Cunningham as our honorary captain because what he did uh, down there in, in, uh, in that game in 1970. Um, so we're looking forward to playing on what I'm sure is going to be a very good Alabama team. One quick follow up, Pat. The, on the broadcast that night, they said this is, they're playing in Glendale. Very rare for these teams from South Carolina and Alabama to come this far west. Uh, is there anything to that? And, you know, this is a rare matchup between. USC and Alabama outside of a bowl context. Yes, we don't have any direct SEC ties into bowl games. We have them with a Big 12 and a Pac uh, and the Big 10. Um, so it is, a, you know, relatively rare. We don't have a lot of room in our schedule. We, you know, we have t nine conference games now in Notre Dame. So we only have two games actually to schedule. And so, um, you know, did you do a home and home with an Alabama or Auburn? We, we've we've played a one off with Auburn. We played a one off with Virginia Tech, et cetera, et cetera. But that was before we played a conference championship game. We had a little bit more flexibility. We had one more week to schedule a game like that. So once we had a, a conference championship game, the scheduling windows or opportunities really tightened. And just to be clear, you want that to happen in two teams coming, not just. I didn't say two teams were going to oh, – no, okay. no one's asked me that question. I have not well, answered that question. <laughs> um, perhaps a second team also using the Coliseum as well as the Rams on top of your first team. Well, um, first of all, our lease, our current lease only permits one team to play. If there's going to be a second team, that is going to have to be negotiated with the NFL or by the NFL with the Coliseum Commission and, and the uh, Science Center. Uh, that, that's not in our hands. None of that would be that. I mean, you guys, you know, your lease is yeah, that's allows for only one, but that yes. that second team wouldn't involve you guys at all. It would have to be the lease would have to be amended, and, and, and to, do, to do that, those two entities would have to agree to do that. And again, it, that's that's you should refer to those entities or Todd Dickey. And that would help FC financially if you have two teams of rather than yeah, it, yeah, it would exacerbate the, the field issue, but yeah, it would be generally more more revenue to help us with our renovation. Yeah. 